The War of the Austrian Succession lasted from 1740 to 1748 and was one of those messy European wars that broke out after a death in the family, the death, to be precise, of Charles VI of the Holy Roman Empire, marking the end of the House of Habsburg. Britain was involved and so it was that in 1743 King George II brought some British troops to the continent where they joined forces with some Austrians and Hanoverians to form what was called the Pragmatic Army. They marched south towards Austria and had reached Aschaffenburg when they ran into trouble. Their old enemies the French had managed to cut off their supplies and on the 27th of June the Pragmatic Army took the decision to retreat to Hanau. But the French had laid a trap. They were lying in wait here in the village of Dettingen. They had a foolproof plan to capture the British king. Nothing could go wrong. Almost nothing. The plan was both clever and simple. The French, led by the Duke of Noailles, occupied the land on one side of the river Main, while the pragmatic army were marching along the other side. During the night, Noailles had sent the Duke of Gramont and most of the army across the river on pontoons to occupy Dettingen, leaving the artillery on the left bank. Meanwhile, Noailles would lead a detachment to Schaffenburg, where they would cross the river and attack the Allies from behind. Now, to get to Hanau, they would have to pass through here. There was nothing else for it. They couldn't go through the thickly wooded uplands of the Spessart Forest, and they couldn't cross the river into French-occupied territory. The army was made up of thousands of men and horses as well, so there was nothing else for it. They had to pass through this neck of land, which was described by one soldier as about as wide as a single cannon shot. With the French artillery firing at them from across the river, the Allies' advance was halted. All the French had to do now was to wait for Noailles to catch up. There was no escape. Unfortunately, things didn't go according to plan. We don't know exactly what went wrong. We don't even know for sure exactly what formation the armies lined up in. And we don't know what Noailles' orders to Gramont were. Most likely they were to stay in Dettingen and wait for the British to attack them. If that's the case, then Gramont either directly disobeyed his orders or failed to keep control of his men. What we do know is that all of a sudden, thousands of French troops came pouring out of the village, almost falling over themselves in their inexperience and impatience. This headlong rush into the arms of their enemy had an unfortunate consequence. The artillery was forced to stop firing. A key component of Noailles' carefully laid trap was gone. There is a story that the king's horse bolted and so he missed most of the action, but other accounts say that he stayed with the battle throughout but was rather out of his depth. But no matter, even though the British themselves were in inexperienced, the French plan had so catastrophically come apart that an Allied victory was now almost guaranteed. And the Royal Scots Fusiliers had, in Sir Andrew Agnew of Loch Nor, an unorthodox and experienced commanding officer who knew how to spring a trap of his own. Normally, soldiers being attacked by a cavalry would stand their ground and fight off the enemy with pikes and muskets. Sir Andrew's plan saw the soldiers dividing down the middle, leaving a lane down which the French rode. Sir Andrew had given his men the now legendary order, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. And so the French rode on, thinking they were successfully breaking through the lines. But all of a sudden, the Scots Fusiliers turned and fired on them from all sides. It's said that later the King rode up to him and said, So, Sir Andrew, I hear the French cavalry rode into your regiment today. And it pleased your Majesty, but they didn't ride out again. The French beat a hasty retreat back through the village of Dettingen and across the river. The already heavy death toll was increased dramatically when one of the two pontoons they were using collapsed 
sending many of them to a watery grave. News of the battle was censored by the French, while the British celebrated in style, and Handel composed the Dettingen Te Deum. For the Allies, this victory was a hugely important and significant one. But the war concluded with the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle, which ended basically status quo ante bellum, which basically means that everything was put back the way it was before the war. Almost eight years, nearly 400,000 soldiers dead, and the whole war might just as well not have been fought at all.